Hey, it's Dan, and welcome to Unified Gaming. So in this one, I want to show you how to make a PvP werewolf that actually works. I've been testing this loads on stream, and honestly, this is a lot of fun. It does use the new mythic, so you do need to obviously get that, but I'm going to show you how to min-max the gear, the sets, the skills to really maximise this, as well as give you a decent sorcerer to use when you're not in werewolf form. As always, if you like my videos, then obviously like, comment, share, and subscribe. It really, really helps. And as always, a massive thanks to all the people on Patreon who help make the videos possible. If you want to support myself there, there's details down below. So for this one, as you can probably gather, we are going to be using the talk of the last Aelid King. This is fantastic for Werewolf. Honestly, this is ridiculous. And it gives you so much stats that it really complements all the passives in the Werewolf skill line. You get damage, which you can boost. You've got good sustain. You need healing. You need magic for that. You've got defense. It has it all. And what's really nice with this is that because it's a one piece set, you can just use this and you're good to go pretty much. Minus obviously a few passives and so on. You might also notice that this video is actually a stream. So if there are questions, then let me know in the sort of chat and stuff. And I'll do my best to answer at the end. As for the race and what we'd use on this, I would recommend being an Orc, an Imperial, or something like a Dark Elf. Orc is kind of the best middle ground because you get stamina and you get health. The health does increase the size of your heal when you're a Werewolf, which is great. And you get weapon and spell damage. This also really helps because as a Werewolf, you have loads and loads of weapon damage. And you can obviously boost that even higher with the passives. What's also nice is it reduces the cost of sprint and the movement speed while sprinting. And as a werewolf, you are running around an awful lot. So this is a really, really good race to pick. For the attributes, I'd recommend having 48 points in health. That would give you around 32,000 health, 33K health with triglyphs and stuff. And then 16 in stamina. You could push the stamina into the magic and go for a bit more mag. Or you could drop some of the health if you wish, but 30,000 health is pretty solid. For the Munderstone, we are using the Lover, and as you can obviously see, we are a Werewolf. Now, in this part of the build, I want to go through and show you what to do as a Sorcerer, so if you're not in form, what you can use, and if you are in form, then how that actually feels. When you're in human form on this build, you have a choice or spammable. You can use Inner Beast, or you could go to Dual World and use something like Rapid Strikes, or you could use, even if you want to hardcast Frags. It's not great, but... I would recommend Inner Beast out of all of them. It's a really good spammable, like it's really slept on. When it's buffed, it's like a 10k tool tip almost. It's a 9.4k and it goes up higher and higher still. It gives them minor vulnerability, so they take more damage. They get minor maim, so they do less damage to you. It's got a synergy, so allies can synergize with it. It's ranged, it's dirt cheap. Like if you look at that, it's 2000 stamina. The bow is more. <laughs> it's really, really, really cheap. So. This is a really good spammable that is really slept on. We then use Whirling Blades. This is the Execute. So when we get people low health, we can then hit them hard with this and it deals up to 100% more damage. You then have a choice between Crystal Frags or Crystal Weapon. If you want to go with Crystal Weapon, that's absolutely fine. That will give you more oomph on your light attack Whirling Blades. But because we are at range, having the range Frag proc is better in my opinion. So you can proc this when you're just doing your uh, inner beast. So as you're casting it, you can then use your frags. So that's why we use that um, item there and that skill. We then have streak, which is our mobility skill and it stuns people. We then use bound armaments. As we do light attack weaving, we basically charge this up and then we can shoot this. You use this also because it gives you more max stamina just for being on the bar, which is great. And if you want to, you could change this to the mag version for the minor resolve and also the minor protection for more defense. For the ultimate, we are using pack leader. This is really good, and I'll get to this in a moment, but basically this is the werewolf ult. On the back bar, we have hurricane, haunting curse. Hurricane is a movement skill and it's an armor buff. It's also a very small passive dot. Haunting curse is a delayed burst skill. And what's nice is that although the tooltip is 11,000 there, when we switch to the front bar, it does take the front bar damage. So to show that, if I hit someone with Haunting Curse here, and I wait on this bar, fully buffed, you get the idea, 7,000. I'm going to cast it again, but swap bars. And you will see this will be a higher. So 
having it on the back bar, you still get the full damage as if it's on the front bar. So you do it that way around. We then have Dark Deal to swap Magicka to Stamina as we need. It's also a mini heal, which is quite nice. And it's minor Berserk and minor Force. So it gives us more damage. We then use Crit Surge, which gives us healing as we do damage. So as we light attack and we get crits and stuff and skills, this just gives heals. And we have Resolve and Vigor, which is a heal over time and a armor buff. I then use Temporal Regard as we are using Bound Armaments. Uh, Bound Arnament, uh, Armaments means that we don't get the minor protection, so we use the Temporal Regard to fix that. As with these skills, they are pretty much sort of the most optimal, but you could change them if you wish. If you are on a 2H build, for example, you could obviously swap um, and use like Wrecking Blow instead of Inner Beast and then use Executioner instead of Whirling Blades. And again, you can obviously change the crystal frags to be the stamp frags if you wish. For me personally, I think the dual world is more like, versatile for when you're in werewolf form, so I would stick with that. I'm just going to put on the undaunted so I don't forget. Now, for the consumables, I do use max health and regen food, so jewels of misrule is great, or smoked bear hunch. They will give you everything you need. You need loads of sustain, not resource pool, so having the recovery is really, really helpful. I would then recommend using tri potions, so something like this will cover your health, magic, and stamina. So if you're low on one of these, you can pop one and you're good to go. As for the champion points, I would use focus mending. You do need healing. Your heals are quite limited, so you do need to have any boost to healing that you can get. Master at arms, because that buffs most of your damage types. Weapon Expert because your light attacks hit really hard as a werewolf and an ironclad or a defense one of choice because you want just defense. For the red ones, Pain's Refuge, Sustained by Suffering and Survival Instincts, these three are a staple for PvP. And then your kind of fourth one could be Celerity for more speed, it could be Bastion to attack um, sorcerers and do more damage to their shields, or you could use just like Rejuvenation for just always recovery. But for me personally, I'd use these three, Survival Instincts, Pain's Refuge, and Sustained by Suffering with Celerity. And on the green ones, Steed's Blessing and whatever you like. But that's kind of the champion points. And the last thing now is really the gear and kind of how that works. As always with my videos, if you do like what I do here, obviously I would suggest subscribing because there is gameplay coming to the channel so you can see that when it comes out. And as always, a huge thanks to everyone on Patreon. So with the build and the sets, we are using Talk of the Last Aided King. This turns off every item set in the game. So I've left two pieces on to show you what this means. When you have this item on, to Talk of the Last Aided King, every one piece, two piece, three piece, four piece, and five piece, so anything in the brackets is disabled. So this will not work, this will not work, this will not work, this will not work. To help make it clearer this video, I've put Rubido and like Silk and stuff, just 160 gear, just to show you that it doesn't matter. For me personally, if I'm actually making it on the server, which I have, I just use any piece that is the same weight, the same trait, and the same glyph. So all you want to focus on is the weights of the build, the traits, and the glyphs. So with that said, what are we doing? We are using mauls, so we're using two um, hammers, so you can use maces or mauls. If you're dual world, use hammers. So that's two maces, they give you penetration. You want sharpened and sharpened. You could change the offhand to be um, charged if you want for more status effects damage or none honed on the main hand sharpened or the offhand. That's also a good option. And then for the back bar, we use a bow. You might notice with the glyphs on the front bar, we have a absorb stamina glyph. We use this because as we attack them, when it procs, you have a chance to um, proc Saundered, and by proc and Saundered you get minor breach which is 3k penetration. So if you use charge you obviously get a higher uptime on that, so that's why a charge one could be useful. We also have the um, shock one there because it procs vulnerability. That said, obviously with Inner Beast you get vulnerability anyway, so you could change this to one of choice. Um, a good option is something like a disease or a poison glyph. And um, for the back bar we use a bow. You want the bow to be defending and the reason we use the bow is because of the bow passives. When you are in a bow and you roll dodge you get a major expedition. So you get a big movement speed. 
With Hurricane and this, you get loads and loads of speed, which will really help you get away if you need to. So that's why we use a bow on the bat bar. As for the rest of the pieces, we then use medium armor helmet, heavy chest, medium armor shoulders, light armor waist, medium armor hands, heavy armor legs, medium armor feet. So that's two heavy, one light, and the rest are medium. I've gone with all in pen on the body apart from a reinforced chest and triglyphs on everything else. Just to go through it once more in case you miss it, it's a medium helmet, it's a heavy chest, a medium shoulders, a light waist, a medium hands, a heavy uh, legs, and medium feet. All tri stat, all impenetrable beyond the chest. As you get more experience with the build, you can add on some well fitted to help with your sprints and your roll dodge. For the jewelry, we have talk of the last Aelid King, weapon damage glyph. We have another ring infused, weapon damage glyph. I've changed the talk to also be infused as well. And then the last ring is also infused, but it's stamina recovery. That's kind of the gear and how that all works. And then that's kind of the human side of the build. The last bit now I want to show is actually what does it look like as a werewolf? So when you are on a werewolf and you're informed, this is what your build looks like. Your stat page has a tasty 7,200 weapon damage. You've got 15 on your stam, 1,000 mag recovery. If you use potions, they go higher and higher. You've got decent pen, you've got okay crit. And obviously you can get more and more uh, stam regen with skills, etc. For the skills, we are using Feral Pounce. This adds a bleed, it's a gap close and it also keeps us in Werewolf, which is really nice. So that's why we use this morph. We use Hercene's Fortitude. I'm just going to attack this so we just stay in Werewolf form. A Hercene's Fortitude, this is our burst deal. It's a 20k heal, which is really good, so it's 10k in PvP. You get stamina back if you're max health, you get minor endurance, you get minor fortitude, you get recoveries, you get brutality. It's just fantastic. The other morph, yes, you get more damage, but you do take more damage, so it's not worth it. And then for the raw morph, we go with Deafening Raw. This hits really, really hard, um, As a, if you combine this with Howl of Agony. So this is the stun. Howl of Agony is the really hard hitting skill. If you put them together, it works really well. This is unblockable. It stuns people. It sets them off balance. It applies armor debuff. It reduces the damage. You also get um, crit chance whilst you have this on we then use howl of agony when you fear them and then you use the howl of agony what will happen is this will get a 25 percent damage boost because you're in front of them plus anybody who's feared to get, takes more damage so you end up getting really really good damage out of this we then have claws of life as a damage over time and a sort of pseudo hot the way you want to use this is basically you slap this on people and then it will heal you over time. The more people you hit this on, the more healing you get. The only issue with it is the radius is really low. It is a cone. You'll be quite near them, but if you're too close to them and you're looking ever so away from them, it doesn't hit them. So you have to be kind of like, well, it's a bit like dizzy and swing. If you imagine you, you've used that, it's a bit like that. You kind of be in this radius and you're gonna get hits on them. And then for the passives and the actual werewolf alt morph, we use pack leader because it gives you the 10% mitigation. You also get minor courage. So that's also weapon damage. And then if you get call of the pack, this will increase the, your um, time in werewolf because these little uh, dire wolves, they can't be killed, but they do count towards this passive at the bottom, which reduces the cost of remaining in werewolf by 20% for each werewolf or dire wolf in your group, including yourself, up to 80%. So with ourselves and the two wolves, that's 60%, which means we can stay in Werewolf for like an entire BG. If we die, etc, etc, it's really, really good. I did try the other morph. Yes, you get more damage, but you do come out of Werewolf if you're not uber, uber aggressive. So for me, I prefer this just because it's more relaxed as a playstyle. But that there is the build, guys. It's kind of got everything you need to sort of see it. Um, if you get any questions about it, obviously let me know. Um, and if you want to see gameplay, there is gameplay on the channel. I've done a stream already where it's, I've been using it for about th probably three hours. So you can see it there, it's on the channel already. 
there will also be dedicated videos coming too. So I suggest that you do subscribe, but I'm gonna call it here. Unless there's any questions, I'm gonna say a massive thanks to all the people on Patreon. Their support really, really helps. And as always, I'll catch you in the next build or the next video or the next stream. So thanks for watching guys. Take care and bye.